Good morning and welcome to Sharper Iron. Spend the next hour with us studying the living and active Word of God, His two-edged sword of law and gospel, recorded for you in Holy Scripture, all about Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, and ascended for you. Thanks for tuning in this morning here on Worldwide KFUO. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. I'm your host, Pastor Timothy Apple of Grace Lutheran Church in Smithville, Texas. Sharper Iron is underwritten by the Lutheran Church Extension Fund, where your investments help support the work of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Visit lcef.org for more information. On this Monday, this Easter Monday, April 13th, we're studying Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. The last time we saw Jesus, he was dead and buried. His enemies had done what they could do to keep him in that grave, because even though they had never believed in him, his word of resurrection still echoed in their ears. Today, Jesus proves that his word is stronger than even death. To help us sharpen our faith in Christ as we study God's word today, we have with us returning guest, Pastor Richard Mitwitty. Pastor Mitwitty serves at University Lutheran Church in Austin, Texas. Pastor Mitwitty, welcome back to Sharper Iron. Thank you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. You took my line. Oh, okay. You can pay me for that one then. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll get you later. Yeah, he is risen indeed. Blessed Easter to you, Pastor Mitwitty. How'd your Easter celebration go yesterday? Um, like everybody else, every other pastor, it, it, it was different. It was, I guess, even more different for me with a with a campus setting that my congregation is pretty much gone. They're, they're out, mm-hmm. out of the area, and we haven't had any worship services. Um, you know, just like anybody else, I'm not even doing any streaming of, of worship either uh, b- because they're back at their home congregations and, and that. So, um, so it was even different for me. I, I really was, was, wasn't doing much of anything. <laughs> for, for, um, but uh, otherwise, it was great. Uh, you know, sure. it, it's, it's, it, it's still Easter. It's still Easter. That's right. That's right. It's still Easter. Christ still is risen from the dead, regardless of what is happening in the world around us. And and that's the text that we get to study this very day, the, the resurrection text, according to St. Matthew. The gospel reading for many, many of our congregations yesterday was this very text that we're going to look at, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. So we'll, we'll get started with it, Pastor Mitwitty. Just, just give us some context here. I, I know that this is going to be a familiar thing, right? We're, we're coming to the first day of the week in this text, but just set the stage for us. Remind us of, of what's been happening as we prepare to move into this text today. Well, of course, uh, on Friday, uh, Jesus was, was crucified. He, was, he died. He was buried pretty hastily. Joseph of Arimathea, Nicodemus, and, and, and the, uh, the women uh, there uh, along, they uh, they got him into the tomb before the Sabbath, and uh, uh, then uh, there's the Sabbath, and it's 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 a, a day of rest for the Jewish people, and even more so a day of rest for for our Lord and Savior, who completed his work. He has finished. He said, he 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 died completing the uh, sacrifice for our sins, and now he rests. But now the good stuff happens here on uh, on, on on Easter morning uh, when the uh, when the women return to the tomb uh, to, to complete the burial process. Very good. Let's go ahead and read the text for today, then. This, is, again, is Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. That's the text for today, Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. 
So, Pastor Metwedy, the, the text starts by reintroducing to us uh, a group of people that we've seen in Matthew's gospel already a couple times. We get mention of these women again, and Matthew has told us in the previous chapter that there were women who saw Jesus die. There were women that saw Jesus buried, and here they are again now. It's the first day of the week. Take us into verse 1. Okay. Yeah, the, 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 the women here, the, there's a, I don't say it's a discrepancy, but there's a different uh, mentioning of, of, of who, which women were there, you know, in, in, in the different uh, Gospels. But uh, Matthew's got the, 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 the two Marys, it just Mary, Mary, uh, I, I call them, that, that, that are there, Mary Magdalene, and this other Mary that is uh, later, I, I, I think, identified in uh in um, Mark as the uh, mother of, uh, of, of James, uh, not the same mother of James and John, I, I don't believe. Um, but anyway, these two women uh, are mentioned there. They, they, they go to the tomb, um, probably with that desire to complete the, the, the burial process. Um, and they go early. There's, there's less people, probably. They're, they're a little more, they're, they're probably still pretty scared about what's happened here, you know, who's at risk. Of, of, of being, uh, you know, persecuted as a follower of Jesus here. So they go early, um, and, and Luke adds that they, they bring spices to complete that burial process. But uh, um, it's dark, and, and now it's beginning to be light. Uh, I, I just don't, I don't think they realize just how much light it really is for them yet, um, especially spiritually here. Um, um, for, for sure. So the and that that's a, a great pickup, I think, to to see that that bit of irony there that it's dawn. Here is the light shining literally from the sun, but there's there's another light that's going to be shining from the tomb, which they will encounter in a moment. I, I wanna mm. I wanna jump back a little bit to that that word you used, discrepancy between the gospels. And and I we don't we don't want to go too deep into this, but it's it's worth our time to at least give a a good reason why we can trust the Bible. Because you're right. Matthew tells things this way, and in Mark you're going to get a slightly different angle on it. I don't know if that's the right way to say it. And in Luke you're going to get there there's different names mentioned sometimes and maybe it seems like there are discrepancies and a very or contradictions is sometimes the word that will get used by the opponents of the scriptures. So, exactly. yeah. I mean, just give us a, a short, helpful answer as to why is it that that there are differences in these accounts in that way, and yet it is all telling the same truth, and they're not contradictions. Help us out briefly there, Pastor Mitwitty. Uh, in short, none of, none of the, the gospels say that only these women were there. That, like Matthew doesn't say only Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. It just mentions the prominent ones from, and I think it's right to say from an angle, from, from Matthew's angle or his, his viewpoint of who he saw who was involved um, or who was reported who, who was seen. It's, it, it, again, it, it, it's never exclusive to say only these were there. It just mentions these. And, 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 and that's all. So it, it, it's not a, a contradiction. In it, it's just it's just mentioning uh, the, the, the different ones that were there, not saying that these that there were people that weren't there uh, in, in, in that idea. Hopefully that makes sense to you there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think I think so. So it's not that again, it's not that they contradict each other, but that each gospel writer is going to mention those details for the purpose of the narrative that he is writing and the the points that he's trying to convey. And so with with Matthew, just to to take a, a stab at it perhaps, back in back in verse 56, it was Mary Magdalene Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, there's a, an agreement with with Mark as you were bringing out, and also the mother right. of the sons of Zebedee saw Jesus die. In mm -hmm. verse 61, you've got Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who see Jesus' burial. And those are the two now that Matthew's going to record going back to the tomb. And, and mm -hmm. at least in, in my mind, this is one of the ways that I've always looked at it, is what Matthew's doing here is he's, he's setting, among other things, what he's doing is he's setting up these two women in particular as reliable witnesses to what they're going to encounter. They had seen Jesus actually die. They had seen Jesus be buried, 
And so when these same women show up at the tomb on Easter morning, you can trust them as reliable witnesses that they knew Jesus was dead. They knew where he was buried. He, they didn't go to the wrong tomb. And so mm-hmm. say that tomb shows up empty. Well, you can trust these women. At least that's, that's one of the things that I see going on in, in Matthew's gospel is he records, he records it this way. Yeah, and there's also another another point about it, about the, the the route that the women took that morning. If if they went back to Bethany, which they probably did, that you know for for the uh, for the uh, Sabbath, then them coming back, they they they, they took a route, then they would have to pick up some of these women along the way, like uh, 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 Salome. They probably picked her up, you know, closer to the tomb. So the 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 gospel writers didn't see these women, you know, as part of the as part of the uh, uh, procession, if you will, of, of, of their journey to the tomb. So there's also a, a, a procession of the women and that they, they picked each other up along the way and, 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 and dropped people off. So they weren't always completely together to be seen. So that's another viewpoint that each gospel writer has is who, who they actually saw was, was involved at the time. Right. So, so then it's kind of like a, a carpool, perhaps. And, and Mary and Mary here, the, the leaders of the carpool, they start the journey off and they pick up other women along the way. And so yeah. Matthew records the two that began it. Not, not that the others weren't there, but these are the two that he mentions. And, and keeping right. in mind that this would have been told to Matthew by these very women as to what happened. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, Matthew wasn't there at the moment that he's recording right now. So again, right. just to just to reemphasize, these are not contradictions, but each gospel writer is crafting the narrative to make these points to us concerning why this is is such an important event. At, at Pastor Mitt, what do you you've briefly gone into this, and, and I, I think we will come back to it as well as we consider the various actors within this text, the women being the first. But but again, their their mindset here. You said they're they're coming to complete the hasty burial, perhaps a bit of of fear. Just and and we don't want to we don't want to over psychologize and take thing you know start reading into the text more than what it says. But but what what is going on for these women here that we can draw from the text? Well, I I, I think they're under a lot of stress. <laughs> This, this has been a life-changing event, a very confusing event. You know, just a week before, Jesus is being hailed into the city. This is a great teacher, their, 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 their master, their lord, their rabbi, and, and, and now he's dead. What is going on in their head? A, a lot of stress, a lot of confusion, um, and, and yet the, the beautiful thing is they still have this devotion to, to attending to, to the burial so they're 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 thinking you know clearly about that, but this has got to be a confusing and stressful time for them. It, it's, I, I don't we don't really read that in the text, but you know as we see a little bit later on, their fear, their mixed emotions going on. Yeah, this 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 must be a, a, a very very at best confusing time for them. For sure, for sure, and and it seems I mean at least by verse one, they they're going to the tomb with the assumption that Jesus is dead and exactly. what they're going to yeah. find there is a corpse and right. and they're going to, I mean, and I think to go back again to chapter 27, the purpose of, of these women originally mentioned it, back in 2755 was that they had followed Jesus from Galilee ministering to him. They were, they were there to serve him. And so whatever emotion, fear, confusion, stress, they still have that in mind. It seems but they're about to learn, as we, we pointed out last week when we looked at that text, that who's really doing the ministering here? Who's really doing the serving? It's it's not the women. It's it's going to be the son yeah. of man, yeah, risen from the dead. So so there they go to the tomb, Mary and Mary, mentioned for us by, by Matthew. It's, it's the day after the Sabbath, the first day of the week. That's Sunday morning, and it's it's early morning, and the light is beginning to rise, and, and the other— the Mary and Mary are going to find out just how bright. So the, the first thing that, that they encounter or the first thing that, that Mar- Matthew is going to draw our attention to is this great earthquake and an angel of the Lord. Those are both in, in verse two. What's going on, Pastor Mitt? Um, 
and, and I love how verse two starts out with a, with a behold. I, I love I love the idus there because because it means hey, check it out. Something noteworthy has happened here. This this great earthquake and and this this angel of the Lord has rolled back the stone and is and is and then is, and is sitting on it with this uh, this brilliant uh, uh, appearance here. Um, that 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 Jesus has has already risen. And he's rolled back the stone, not to let Jesus out, but to, but, but to show the women and, and to show the world that he indeed has, has risen from the dead. So I love that behold, you know, check it out. It's something really noteworthy has happened here. Um, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the guards then, you know, in, in verse 4, they, you know, they, they, they've experienced this and, and they – they become like dead men, which I love the irony here that uh, the the living are dead and, and the dead are alive <laughs> at, 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 at the tomb here. Um, and, and that an earthquake has announced the the, the resurrection. It was, a, it was an earthquake that was a part of his announcing his death as well. And here, the the the, uh, the, the, the earth it sh- itself, the, the God's creation. His earth announces the new creation in this in this earthquake. The, the, the very earth, the very ground that Adam was made out of, now now cries out that he's made new in in, in this. Um, so I, I I I love the fact that that that, that, that even the, the earth is involved in in announcing this this great event. No, that that's that's a great a great insight into the text there that God's creation is announcing his, his new creation as the, the first Adam was created from, from the earth. Now here, the, the second Adam, when he emerges from the earth, the ground cries forth. This is, this is wonderful. And I, I mean, I, to me, as, as I, as I was reflecting on, on that, I'm, I'm brought, I'm reminded of, of various places in the Psalms, and other other places in in the scriptures tends to be poetic parts of the scriptures mm. that talk about things like the trees clapping their hands and and mm. all creation mm. praising God, and and I mean seeing here this earthquake at the moment of is and you pointed out an earthquake at his death and resurrection both mm. that that earthquake I mean I think that that really starts to inform what, how we read those psalms and those those portions of the Old Testament that that as we see creation praising god in the old testament or the psalmist calling upon creation to praise god that yeah. that's all pointing us forward to this very moment to the to the resurrection the recreation so that the ground was cursed because of adam <laughs> and, and here it is despite its cursing is 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 not cursing back it, it's announcing the, the the new creation um i, I think of romans eight twenty two. it says we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the in the pains of childbirth. It's like the whole earth has been groaning under sin, and and despite that, now the earth, you know, shouts out, uh, you know, "He is risen," basically. Right. Yeah. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Here, yeah. here is here is the earth proclaiming that same good news that the angel is about to say quite verbally in a few verses. Before we leave the earthquake, there's there's another point we we studied Amos here on Sharper Iron last fall. And the book of Amos starts by, you know, telling us who the prophet is. And, and when Amos writes his timeline, he, he mentions an earthquake, that, that an earthquake is a, a marker for this prophet. And, and when we talked about that, it, one, of the, one of the things going on with that earthquake in the book of Amos is that it, it validates the prophet's message. So, so the prophet had spoken, Amos had spoken, and then two years later, here's this monumental earthquake as if the Lord is saying, listen to him, much like the Mount of Transfiguration. And, and I wonder if, if a similar thing is going on here with, with this earthquake too. Here is, and we've seen this in Matthew, here is the prophet. And, and as the Father said from the Mount of Transfiguration, listen to him. That, that in this resurrection and the earthquake particularly at this moment, we're, we're seeing God the Father say of his son, his word is true. He is, in fact, Lord of all. Mm, mm, indeed. 
So what what about now you you mentioned that you've got the angel here and and the angel comes from heaven rolls the stone back sits on it before we get into his his words tell us a little bit about his his appearance there in verse 3 Yeah that appearance like lightning and clothing white as snow that's sometimes words just don't don't really do it but you think it's just so so awesome so bright so uh, we're unable to really take in this this being here. Uh, it's it, it's really <clears throat> um, amazing, and, and and the reaction to an angel is usually people fall on their face and and, and are afraid. And I, I really hope it's not like that in eternity. Uh, I hope every time we see an angel, we don't we don't fall. I, I'm gonna I don't want to spend eternity on my face. You know, <laughs> I hope we're not always. Uh, afraid but the, the, there's every time in the scripture an angel shows up people are afraid and, and the angel has to say to them you know don't be afraid you know it's okay i'm on your side sort of thing so this 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 this, this angel um is, is you know it, it, it causes fear in, in the guards and, and they and they you know fall flat on their face here as, as if they're dead mm. um but it's like kind of the angel is I'm not exactly saying to the guards this, but the, we have a new guard at the tomb now. Okay, we, this angel is in charge of the tomb, not 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 these guards. Um, and the, the, you know, the, the guards were, were guarding the the uh, the tomb from anybody getting in, from, from from the disciples, especially for stealing the body. That's they were there in the first place. Was the uh, the uh, the, the 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 Sanhedrin saying, "Hey, you, you, you need to seal up this thing. The disciples are going to steal his body." So the, the, the guards are there to keep people out, but the the the, the angel is to uh, is is to uh, is, is to show that Jesus has come out. He, he's not there anymore. Right, as you said earlier, this is not the angel letting Jesus out of the tomb. Rather, this right. is. Jesus has already come out of the tomb, and the right. angel is there as a new guard. I like that. He's as a new guard, and, and his role as guard is to announce what has happened. And, mm -hmm. and his, his appearance there, like lightning, his, his clothing white as snow, does harken back, for me at least, to the transfiguration, to Jesus' own clothing. And, and again, this, this angel is not Jesus, but the the... Think about the glory that we saw in the Mount of Transfiguration. Now there's this similar glory in the angel. How much more glory is there now in our Lord Jesus, risen from the dead? And again, those words of the Father from that mountain, listen to him. How much more do we listen to him now that he has been raised from the dead? These these guards, too, and I think we'll, we'll probably have to come back to this in, towards the end of the program, but these guards, too— they they become like dead men their their fear is a different sort of fear than the women have and i think that and again maybe we'll, we'll save this i think for the end after we've kind of gone through the text but and reflect upon these various groups that we see here but the, the angel doesn't tell them don't be afraid and, and again we don't you know we don't know how much are they hearing are they listening at all we, we know mm -hmm. in tomorrow's text that they're not going to to receive any of this in faith, however much they heard, right. but but they yeah. they're not told don't be afraid. And I, there is a there maybe is a, a moment of, of comparison and, and contrast between the guards on the one hand and their fear, and then the the news of the angel to the women don't be afraid. But I think I think we'll we'll save that towards the end, Pastor Metwitty. Start start with just a couple minutes here before our break. Start taking us into what the angel as the guard for the tomb announces to the women. Yeah, there's that familiar, uh, uh, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. It, you know, again, every time there's an angel or many times that the angel has to assure them, you know, don't be afraid. I, I'm on your side or, you know, that, that, that sort of thinking here. And, and, and I think, uh, you know, kind of uh, given props to uh, Dr. Jeffrey Gibbs and, and him in discussing this, it's, it's, it's an imperative, a very forceful not like a command to them, but it's a, you know, stop being afraid. It's a good rendering of that. 
that this is a, a, a very, very uh, uh, strong, uh, say forceful, but an, an imperative in, in, in the Greeks there, that, uh, you, you know, like they, they, they have an understandable fear. I mean, they, they've come there expecting the, the tomb as they left it, even with the, with, with the stone there and, and we're wondering how are they going to get it rolled open. Uh, they're expecting to find a corpse, like 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 you said, and, and instead here they find this 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 dazzling lightning appearance angel. Um, yeah, so it's this kind of putting fear on top of their already fear of or confusion. What's going on here? But the the, the wonderful words of the to start out with 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 the with the angel is you know stop being afraid. Uh, you, there's no reason to be afraid here. Because of the, what, what what gracious act has happened here? Uh, of course, they don't quite know that or understand that yet. But uh, this is an angel. He has a message, and he he starts it with uh, "Stop being afraid. Don't don't be afraid." Yeah, stop stop being afraid, and and not just stop being afraid because of all of these events right here. You know, you, they see the guards like dead men. Imagine imagine that soldiers looking like dead men if you if you encountered soldiers looking like dead men how much more should you be afraid and and this yeah. huge stone gone right so so everything at the tomb would have caused fear and the angel mm -hmm. says stop being afraid but there's a an even bigger reason to stop being afraid that goes beyond what they've seen there in those events at the tomb to to a greater taking away of fear that can only come from the risen Lord. And we will pick that up on the other side of the break. You're listening to Sharper Iron here on Worldwide KFUO. We're going to take that short break, but we'll be right back. Please stick around. Hi, I'm Gary Duncan, the executive director of KFUO Radio. We are all impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. All of the KFUO staff is practicing social distancing by working from home offices and temporary home studios. Our promise to you is that we will continue to bring you the word of Christ in our programming and worship services, the clear message that we've been proclaiming since 1924. During this worldwide pandemic, we will continue to share the comfort of Scripture. God is our refuge and our strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. That's from Psalm 46, 1. Thank you for listening and supporting KFUO Radio. And rest assured that when you turn on the radio, click on our live stream, or download your favorite podcast, we will be here proclaiming Christ for you anytime, anywhere. KFUO.org. I'm Pastor A.J. Espinosa, host of Thy Strong Word, taking your questions as we go through the entire Bible, chapter by chapter. Let's read together with guest pastors from around the country and the church around the world, taking chapters and verses together in context, every passage fitting together in the Lord Jesus, because He is the Word of God. Let's read together. Thy Strong Word, weekday mornings at 11 on Worldwide KFUO. Underwritten by Lutheran Heritage Foundation, lhfmissions.org touching the lives and the hearts of our listeners with the Word of Christ. Sharper Iron is such an incredible, amazing gift. I thank you so much for what it's doing for me and what I know it must be doing for a lot of other people. God bless. To leave a message on the KFUO comment line, call 314-996-1542. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Worldwide KFUO. Welcome back to Sharper Iron on this Easter Monday. We're looking at Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10 with Pastor Richard Mitwitty of University Lutheran Church in Austin, Texas. Pastor Mitwitty, prior to the break, we were looking at the angel's words. He, he starts with familiar words. Whenever you, you see an angel in, in the scriptures, it's often that he will start with, don't be afraid, stop being afraid because he's an angel after all. And, and this angel particularly is, is shining like lightning. He's got dazzling white clothing. So, so stop being afraid because there's an angel here. But, but even more than that, 
the stop being afraid goes far deeper than don't be afraid of what you're seeing here. In fact, what you're seeing here, the angel tells the women, is a greater reason to stop being afraid. Continue to help us into the angel's news to the women. Um, yeah, don't be afraid, he says to them. And then, and then it's even kind of comforting where, where he says, yeah, I know why you're here. I know that you're looking for Jesus, who, who was crucified. You know, I know you're looking for your, your, your Lord, your, your rabbi, your teacher, who is dead. But he's not here, for he has risen. As he said, that, you know, it, it, here that, you know, don't be afraid, and that's an imperative, and it almost sounds kind of forceful, but then this, I know that you're looking for Jesus. You know, I, I know that he, you're sad that he's dead. But and here, here comes the, the words that change everything. He's not here. He has risen. And, and you know, and then he has to remind them, as he said, which he had said, Jesus had said several times that he was, he was going to die and rise again. And just like the disciples, it probably just didn't totally click. And, and here now it's, it's coming to fruition for that. But uh, um, I, I, I look at that as really, really comforting. You, you know, I, I know why you're here. I, I know what you're looking for. And I'm sorry to disappoint you that he's not laying here. But that's the good news is he ain't laying here. <laughs> okay. So, so it's, it's, yeah, you're so right. You know, don't be afraid of what's happened here. But don't be afraid of really now of, of death. Because what's happened here is, is, is happened for you and, and, and for all people who receive this by faith, that uh, that 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 death can't hold Jesus down, and this this, this great words of comfort here that that to them to hear that he's not here. Uh, the, the bad news is he isn't here. The good news is he isn't here. <laughs> uh, he has risen. <laughs> that that's right. Yeah. The, the if if you were looking to see Jesus in the tomb. Sorry, but I've got yeah, better sorry, news a, for you. Yeah. yeah, sorry, you're yeah I've got, <laughs> right. Yeah, if you're disappointed, that, it's okay. <laughs> but don't be. I know, this, I, know, I know the spice has set you back a little bit, but that's all right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right. don't don't be afraid. Right. Yeah. And, and I like that. Don't don't be afraid again, of, of not just of what you're seeing here, but don't be afraid of, of death. Don't be afraid of of anything, really. I, I mean, that's that's I think finally after after because of this event what is there for these women to fear there there's nothing to be afraid mm -hmm. to, to go you, you mentioned romans 8 earlier but to, to continue in that chapter towards the end of it that nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of god in christ jesus our lord because he is the crucified one and the risen one and i, I do think that's that's a key thing that the angel mentions here to the women i know that you seek jesus who was crucified so so jesus mm -hmm. is the the crucified one, but he's mm -hmm. not the dead one. <laughs> he's the, the living crucified. That's a good one. point. Yeah. You know, and yeah, those, that's... those two things go together, his crucifixion and his resurrection. And, and within that Jesus being the crucified one and the risen one, mm -hmm. he's, he's the savior. I mean, this is, you know, I, I feel like I, I feel like I've probably said this multiple times as we've been going through the passion narrative that, that we're, we're reaching the climax, we're reaching the climax. And, and in a, in a certain sense, everything that happened on good Friday that Matthew recorded for us at the end of 27 is a climax. And, and yet here, the climax keeps building. And, and this is, I mean, we should probably take a, at least a couple of moments and, and reflect upon why, why is it that the resurrection of Jesus is so central to Christianity? Uh, it's everything. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, if, if this hasn't happened, then, then everything is, 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 everything is, 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 is worthless. What it, what it, you know, it's, if, if, if Christ hasn't risen from the dead, our faith is in, is in vain. So yeah, if if this if this has not happened, it actually I wanted to talk about that a little bit later on here. Then we're th th this is all worthless, right? I mean, we could we could cut the program right now if if yeah, Christ yeah, is not raised, we're we're wasting a good hour of our time, and we could be doing something else. You, you, you and I, and every pastor, are getting paid for nothing. Yeah. Really, you think right. about it? <laughs> this is the yeah. biggest scam ever. 
Yeah. Um, but, 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 yeah. <laughs> but he is raised. He is, yeah. And, and if you made a good point. He still is the crucified one for us. He still is Christ crucified for us. He's just not dead. That, that, that was a really good point. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 so he, Jesus still is our crucified one, but he is also our risen one. So his, right. his death still has its effect for us, as does his resurrection. So you, you, you can't separate Good Friday and Easter. Ever. We, we, we still need them together. Right. In, in his resurrection, Jesus bears the, the, the scars. Right? I mean, and, and that's going to become this, this coming Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter. That's the gospel reading from John 20, where, where mm-hmm. Jesus shows those scars to his disciples to show that, that he is the crucified and risen one. And, and in the book of Revelation, the, the scars get mentioned as, as that which we will see when he returns in glory. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, he's, he's the crucified one and the risen one and and those two events together this is this is our salvation for us mm-hmm. and and, yes, and as everything. you said yeah. with without this event if jesus is is dead and in the tomb then then we can go home and and we we yeah. would Sadly. be using our time <laughs> yeah. and we'd be wasting it but and yeah. this is and this is first corinthians 15 for anyone who wants to to check it out later but christ is raised from the dead and and because mm-hmm. that's true, well, well, what does that mean for us, Pastor Mitwitty? If 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 Christ has if Christ has not risen from the dead, then nothing else matters. But if Christ has risen from the dead, then nothing else matters. It's, it's how I look at that. That the, the, the resurrection of Christ is everything. If, if, if he hasn't risen, then. Then, then so what? What is the meaning of life? There is no meaning. It, it's just death. There is no life. And that, that's where it ends up. Um, so hopefully that's where you wanted me to take that. <laughs> well, well, right. So, so that's. I mean, if Christ is not raised from the dead, then then nothing matters. This 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 life is mm-hmm. pointless. There's there's only hope for this life only. But right. Right. but if Christ is raised from the dead, and in fact he is, since Christ is raised from the dead, we should say. Then nothing else matters in the sense that that is the key event of all of history and and for our our lives as well. And when you when you look at the rest of of scripture from here on out, it is Jesus resurrection that plays a central role in the proclamation of the church. And and particularly Mm -hmm. I'm thinking in the in the book of Acts. That, mm-hmm. that when, I mean, and, and Paul gets himself into trouble with this matter of the resurrection more than, more than once. But I, I think when we read through the book of, and this is just one example, I'm sure we can, I know we can find other examples throughout the epistles too. But when Paul starts talking about the resurrection of the dead, mm-hmm. he's not just talking about some generic principle of resurrection, but he, he's talking about this event that Jesus has been yeah. raised from the dead. Yeah. And, and, and that hits people's ears in the book of Acts pretty, pretty offensively sometimes. They're like, whoa, everything was cool until you said that. <laughs> now you're an idiot. Everything was cool except for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we want to hear more about this in, in Athens. You know, some were like, no, yes. We want to hear more about this. But yeah, that's, and, 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 you're right. In the book of Acts, when Christianity was spreading, it was with that message that Jesus has risen from the dead, and that this is for us and for all people. That's, that's Christianity in total, that Jesus has risen from the dead. And, and, and that, 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 that is so central. And, and then it just, I, I, I guess I'll kind of move us along here. That, that, that's the message that the angel gives to the women to, to tell the disciples. Yeah, go quickly. Yeah, it says in verse seven. Looking at that now, is that okay if I move us along into that? Sure, that go right? right ahead. Yep, yeah, yeah. I was going to do it soon yeah. too. <laughs> okay, then go quickly. Tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell them what you. Don't tell them about me. Don't tell them about the guards. Don't tell them about the earthly. Tell them that Jesus has risen from the dead. All right, that's what's that's what that's what's important here. Um, so it's great. They, the women go to the tomb with with one job in mind that they were going to do this burial, you know, ritual, and they leave with a whole another job, if you will, another assignment, 
a, a message instead. You know, this is what you tell the world. This is what you're going to tell the disciples, and this is what's going to go out to the world, that Jesus has risen from the dead. Um, and, 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 and that adds you know, the, 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 this Galilee part. Um, that uh, I don't know, I'm moving into another area there. You, you, Keep going. You Keep going, to... Pastor Mitwitty. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Go, go and tell them um, that, uh, you know, to, to, that uh, I'll, 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 you'll see them, him, him in Galilee. Of course, he's going to see him before. He's going to see him that, that, that evening. And, and then the, the next Sunday, then with, with, with the Thomas event uh, highlighted, um, but, but you're going to go to Galilee, which I think is, is, is important because, um, um, you know, why, why Galilee? Uh, why not just there in Jerusalem? But, you know, after the Passover is, is finished, the, the, you know, the disciples aren't from Jerusalem. They, they live in Galilee. I mean, that's their hometown. And that's where Jesus met them and called them. And that was his home area, too, there in Capernaum, when he kind of switched hometowns from Nazareth to, to Capernaum. So it's natural that they're going to be back in Galilee for, uh, for, for you know, teaching them there and, 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 you know, kind of, you know, great commissioning them there also in, in Galilee. So um, it makes sense that, uh, that it, was going to, it was going to be in Galilee and not just hanging around right. in Jerusalem for, for 50 days. I mean, they, they would come back for the uh, for Pentecost um, and that, but, and the Ascension happens, in, you know, near Jerusalem, but, uh, Galilee is going to, going to be the place where, where, where they go back to kind of, kind of making a full circle of where we started our ministry together is where it's going to all come to a culmination there. Right. And, and again, as, as you pointed out, you know, this is one of those places where, where Matthew doesn't give us some of those details that we have from the other gospel writers, particularly Luke, what he gives us in Luke. And then in the book of Acts at the beginning, in terms of, the Ascension and Bethany and Jerusalem and, and those events. Matthew mm -hmm. Matthew doesn't specifically record that, but he does make mention of Galilee. And, and mm -hmm. I think we'll get into this a little bit more in tomorrow's text because they do go back to Galilee, and that's where Jesus gives them what, what is often called the Great Commission. I think you're right to connect it to the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Back in Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 4, you've, you've got this quote that Matthew includes from the prophet Isaiah about Galilee. Galilee of the Gentiles being the place that the light shines. And now it's going to be Galilee again, that that light now even brighter is going to shine through baptism and the preaching of Jesus word that will go out to all nations. So I think yeah, Matthew, Matthew's doing something with that. He's, he's inviting us to connect these dots to see this particular importance to what Jesus is doing especially for our life in the church. And that, that's going to come up again more tomorrow. So, so here the women have got this news from the angel. You're going to see Jesus. See, I've told you. And, and they go, and I love, I love the way Matthew records this. They go with fear and great joy. And I think I would have too, you know, fear and great joy mixed at this moment. No doubt. Yeah. 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 Indeed. They, they run to tell the disciples and then behold again, Here's Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I love those. I love those beholds in there. Matthew uses behold sixty-two times in, in his in his gospel, and, and eight times in this chapter alone. It, check it out. Something something really noteworthy has happened here. <laughs> yeah, Jesus meets them. Well, so take it. I mean, he you know in English it's translated greetings, which is really I don't know. We nobody talks like that in English. I don't know. Maybe people do on on the University of Texas campus when you see someone you say greetings. We I, I don't know if that what what's the well, we, we, that, we, don't that just say, we don't say awkward. howdy. <laughs> we, right, we I know. Yeah, howdy. that's that's a place in College Station that says howdy when they greet. I don't know what, but but greetings in English. <laughs> this is this is the way it's translated in the ESV, and I'm not saying it's a bad translation, but. I'm not sure if that what what's the effect what is what's the effect of Jesus what is he saying to these women? Yeah, the, the, the greetings there. It's the same word I, I believe that uh, is is used when the uh, when when the soldiers were abusing Jesus. You know, hail, hail, King of the Jews. Um, it's it, it, it's a word that is you know it, it, it's used it for kind of hello or, or, or hey there, but it's actually much, much more than, than, than that. It's not just 
um, a, a uh, you know, just kind of a, a hey, how you doing sort of thing. It, it, it is a hail. Uh, but, but greetings, I, I think, is, is good in that it's, it's not um, with, 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 with the force. It's, it's more of a, 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 a comforting or a way of saying hello without completely shocking them. You know, he's, he's taken them by surprise. And so greetings it, 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 in our English speaking ears, you know, sounds kind of formal, I, I suppose. You know, we, we don't talk that way anymore. Uh, yet, given how it's used all, uh, elsewhere in scripture, uh, you know, kind of, you know, hail or, you know, you know, you know, you know, blessings to thee or something that, that are kind of kind of strong greetings it's kind of softer i guess actually and you know it's it's not maybe not said too loudly or too softly but addressing them in a way that you know again doesn't shock them or surprise them or cause them you know more fear um i i don't think greetings is all that bad actually fair, fair enough yeah. fair enough and and that's yeah. i don't you know I'm I'm thinking back, and I know this this takes us to Luke, but this is the same word that Gabriel speaks to Mary at the Annunciation, oh, where it's often you, you know go. greetings, yeah. O favored one, and and yeah, hear how go. much more that that mm-hmm. these where whereas Mary received this greeting because the the Son of God was to be conceived in her womb, here here these mm-hmm. women receive that greeting from the risen Lord Himself, and and they. Yeah. <laughs> they what I mean they come then upon seeing him hearing his voice they come and and grab hold of his feet and that's that maybe seems like a small detail but we shouldn't pass it by without saying no. why it's pretty important yeah good, good point about about the annunciation I wish I had thought of that <laughs> that's a good yeah, yeah, yeah greetings instead of hail or that sort of thing yeah I like greetings yeah so take us into this the matter of Jesus' feet. Why, why is it important that Jesus has feet? Um, yeah, and, and that he's standing on them, number one. That, 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 that's a good point. That he's, he's alive, and he's up on his, uh, on his feet here. But, you know, this is an act of worship. They, 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 they uh, you know, prostrate themselves in, in front of, on the ground. Again, I hope in eternity we're not always having to do that. I don't want to spend that time on my face all the time. But maybe that's not such a bad thing. But um, that, that is important that that, that 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 they're touching him. And in fact, then it, it, it said in the uh, oh gosh, I forget where it says you know don't touch me. I think that's John, isn't it? Where Mary yeah. Magdalene. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's important it, because um, this kind of flies in the face of Gnosticism, you know, about Jesus's body. But but also today, when you hear people sometimes talk about and even preach that Jesus resurrected spiritually and, and, and not bodily, and and to be honest with you, I don't see what the benefit is in that. It's kind of like you know, what's the deal with that? Why, why is that more important than a bodily resurrection? But here, but that 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 Jesus's body has resurrected. He is he he is you know completely resurrected for us and that that bodily resurrection then is 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 our gift as well that that's going to be you know our 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 fate that you know that that that's we have that that great hope to fulfill here so yeah i think that he has his body scars and all is is very important uh that uh to point to our resurrection especially right right and so the the jesus then gives them the same message that the angel had. Don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. And, exactly. and he says, go and tell. Now, the angel said, go tell the disciples. Jesus says, go tell my brothers to go to yeah, Galilee, which is which is beautiful considering who these men who these men are and, and what they had most recently done to Jesus. You've, you've got Peter, mm-hmm. the denier, and the other 10 deserters, and mm-hmm. Jesus calls them brothers oh that's i mean that's that's wonderful that, that's a key point here he still loves them what what what, the, what they've done and 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 they're, and they're not there you know where are they they're, they're sleeping in you know they've they've decided to, to socially distance themselves from anything that's going on with jesus the women go he still loves them he still has work for them to do yeah, and, and calling them brothers there yeah that's a, that, that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful thing it just 
it, it, it would almost maybe hurt if the disciples heard us at that point <laughs> mm. <laughs> because of because of what what, what they had, had done or mm. and how they're feeling right now so and another imperative there that Jesus says you know stop being afraid you know, uh, yeah. you, you, you've got your mark you've got your marching orders you know you know for, from the angel yeah yeah just I'm reiterating that um, and and giving you then also they got to see the empty tomb now they get to see the First fruits, if you will, <laughs> of that, they get to see the, the, the risen Christ, uh, right? And, and, uh, and, and, and to touch him, oh, oh my gosh, we, yes. we have that to look forward to. It's like, oh, they got it first. Oh. Um, yes, yes, this yeah. is wonderful. I mean, yeah. again, what did they? They had gone to the tomb to see a corpse, and yeah. here they yeah. see Jesus alive, and that's the promise for the disciples as well, that that they are going to see him alive, and he will keep that promise. We'll see that in tomorrow's text. Pastor Mitway, well, we've got three minutes here left on the morning, and, yeah. and you've, oh you, God. I know we're having a great conversation here. You just, just to sort of wrap things up, you, we've, you've identified several actors within this story, several groups receiving this this news in different ways you've got the guards who've who've become like dead men in their their unbelief you've got the disciples who who are quarantined all alone and yet jesus is going to call them brothers you've got the women expecting to see a corpse now have have seen the the risen lord himself and are comforted even as they're they're mixed with fear you've got the angel the new guard at the tomb announcing the news Help us to to tie this all together and and know the comfort of Jesus' resurrection for us as Christians today. Yeah, especially like the women, and it, 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 that they, they they have this mixed emotion of of of, of fear and great joy <laughs> uh, as they leave there. They're, and it's so similar for us today uh, on Earth. I mean, in the present situation of, 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 of the virus, you know, going on, we've got this mixed emotion, especially at Easter here. We've, we've got the mixed emotions of, of fear in this, in this, and confusion in this virus situation, the uncertainty. And yet we have the joy of the risen Christ, the great joy of that. And, 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 and the virus aside, just our, our daily life, especially as Lutheran Christians, we're always in a mixed state of, of not emotions, but of law and gospel in our lives. We're, we're, we're stressed and, 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 and in fear because of our sin, and, and we're even convicted by the suffering and death of, of, of Jesus, uh, who died in the place of our sins. You know, we're, we have the burden of the law, but, but there's the great, the, the great joy we have in, in, in the victory we have over over sin, death, and the devil for us in in, in Christ's death and, and His resurrection. So we 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 have this mixed emotion that this the the, the mixture of law and gospel in our lives every day that we we've got sin, death, and the devil, but we, we can stop being afraid of that because of of the of the resurrection. As you pointed out at the beginning of the show, the the enemies of of Christ. They didn't do enough to, to, to destroy his mission. He, he's, he, he's, he, he's risen from the dead. The, the enemies couldn't do enough, but Christ's grace is enough. So we, we can live, stop being afraid of what's going on in the world. Stop being afraid of, of sin, the devil, and even of death, because Christ has risen. He has risen he's indeed. Risen. Amen. Pastor Richard Mitwitty is the pastor at University Lutheran Church in Austin, Texas, helping us this morning with Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Sin, death, the devil couldn't do anything to stop Jesus. His word proved true. He rose victorious on the third day for you and for me to take away all fear of death to give us the promise of eternal life. I'm your host here on Sharper Iron, Pastor Timothy Apple of Grace Lutheran Church in Smithville, Texas. Thanks for spending the morning with us. Talk to you again tomorrow.